Why do we care so much about emissions? Well, emissions from fossil fuels represent carbon which has been buried for hundreds of millions of years, which now has been burned for energy and the carbon dioxide which results will now increase the carbon dioxide potentially in the atmosphere given that this carbon had previously been buried. Historically, if one were to compare atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations as since they have been measured in the late 1950s, or using studies of the gas bubbles trapped in ice, one can extend uh, this record back farther. One can see a relationship between the uh, emissions of carbon uh, from the burning of fossil fuels and the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air. Why do we care about atmospheric carbon dioxide? Well, if the planet was so big that its climate would always stay constant, regardless of uh, what insignificant uh, humans uh, did, then perhaps we wouldn't. Um, but we know that our planet's climate is not stable. It changes. And actually, we are far colder right now than the majority of the past 500 million years of our planet's climate has demonstrated. For most of the past 500 years, there has not been permanent ice caps at the poles. That is a new phenomenon given that our Earth is currently colder than average. We have seen changes in the recent uh, geologic uh, record uh, so that 12,000 years ago there were ice sheets which covered northern North America with sheets which were a third of a mile thick. And so the amount of heat trapping gas is thus important in a planet whose temperature can become warmer and can become colder. And because of the billions of metric tons of carbon emissions, humans have been changing the atmosphere, adding more and more carbon each and every year. The concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is measured in parts per million, and it has been measured directly since 1959, when the parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere uh, was registered at 315 parts per million. Since then, the carbon dioxide levels have increased each and every year. Thus, every year since 1959, atmospheric carbon dioxide levels have hit a record high because not in human history have levels been as high as was measured. Atmospheric carbon dioxide levels reached 400 parts per million in uh, 2014, and almost a quarter of the current atmospheric carbon dioxide um, uh, that uh, we register is new since 1959. In that context, it is not surprising that in 2018, carbon dioxide levels reached a record high. These records were then broken in 2019 when carbon dioxide levels reached a record high. And these levels were then broken again this year in 2020 when carbon dioxide levels reached a record high. Now, notice that not only can one average uh, the carbon dioxide levels for the year, but also provide monthly uh, values. And you can see that there's a normal fluctuation as you know northern continents uh, then uh, do, uh, undergo a lot of photosynthesis, which traps a lot of carbon and then leaves fall in the autumn, releasing a lot of carbon. So notice there is a yearly cycle. Because of decreased economic activity, because of coronavirus in 2020, with decreased transportation, decreased airline travel, etc., global emissions did drop about 7% by differing uh, values in different countries. And it may be that this reduction then caused carbon dioxide levels to increase by a lesser amount in 2020 compared to 2019 than uh, we observe in the, uh, between 2019 and 2018. Nevertheless, every month's average in 2020 was higher than the corresponding month in 2019, 
May 2020 had a carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere of 417 parts per million. This is the highest in human history. So although the 2020 average is expected to increase less than the 2.6 parts per million at that 2019 increased over 2018, or the average of 2.4 parts per million of the past 10 years, nevertheless, our carbon level in the atmosphere is still rising, even with the drop in global emissions because of coronavirus. Given that the carbon dioxide concentration difference between the glacial epochs when glaciers uh, covered uh, enormous expanses of land and the interglacials where it was warmer than it is today, the difference was only about 100 parts per million of carbon dioxide. It is thus concerning that we have seen that level of difference between 1959 and 2020.